Good evening, Vinyl Community. Hi, hope you're all doing really well. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, uh, just thought I'd uh, come and make a, a fairly quick video. Um, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as you, ooh, excuse me, as some of you might be aware, uh, I have had a, um, a bit of a hiatus uh, from making videos for um, for a few weeks. And that was basically because I managed to pick up two copyright strikes um, uh, courtesy of the uh, fascist YouTube police um, basically for not for playing recorded music um, or videos because I never do that um, for the simple reason that uh, you know I, I always think that uh, it'll be blocked or I'll get a strike um, but yeah just from as, you, as some of you know I, I've uploaded videos from time to time of me playing the guitar um, sometimes it's my own compositions, um, and uh, other times I play, you know, other, uh, you know, other people's uh, music. Um, so um, yeah, I, I did um, I did a tribute to Steve Priest from uh, the Sweet uh, back in May, I think it was, uh, which uh, was the Sixteens, um, and I played it in its entirety, you know, as you do as a tribute. Um, didn't think anything else of it um and then uh, about two just over two weeks ago um i played a neil young song which was heart of uh, uh, old man um and then uh, a couple of days after that i tried to upload a video and it wouldn't upload and i thought there was a problem with my wi-fi um and so it got to the stage where by uh, i actually logged on to my youtube account on uh, my works PC, and uh, I found out, <laughs> lo and behold, I'd got two copyright strikes. And the reason I got the ban was because um, I'd uploaded uh, or I'd, I'd performed the second song uh, within 30 days of the first one. Of course, I didn't even know that I got the first one, hence the uh, misdemeanor. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just... I just think it's a bit petty, really, to be honest with you, with everything else that's going on in the world, you know. Um, but I'm sure uh, some of you will probably be delighted that the thought that I won't be murdering uh, classic songs from here on in um, for fear of um, uh, getting my wrist slapped again. So, uh, yes, so there you go. Anyway, so that's by the by and all done and dusted. And, um, yeah, you're a naughty boy, Rob. So there you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay. So I've been um, buying uh, quite a bit of vinyl the last couple of weeks, um, but obviously I haven't been able to show any of it. Um, so it's kind of accumulated. Um, and I'm going to be doing this kind of topsy-turvy um, because there's a lot of stuff I bought last week which I haven't got with me tonight. Uh, so I'm actually going to just uh, show the stuff that I bought today. Uh, this is all from my good uh, buddy Ben at uh, SJ Records, of course, as usual. Um, and as usual for me, it's a mixed bag, a bit of it, all sorts, really. So, um, yeah, so let's just uh, get into it. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. But uh, uh, first out of the bag, um, yeah, um, those of you uh, who aren't, um, aren't in the UK, this probably won't mean an awful lot to you, but those here um, we'll certainly know this guy um, this is Alexi Sale and this is his album The Fish People Tapes from 1984 uh, now Alexi Sale was uh, or is uh, a sort of alternative uh, comedian who was uh, big uh, in the sort of early 80s uh, the sort of new wave of um, sort of cool alternative uh, um, uh, sort of British, uh, com uh, you know, comics that were coming through the ranks, um, and uh, they uh, they all sort of invariably um, ended up uh, getting sort of slots on TV. Um, Alexis Sell um, did actually actually have his own show for a while, um, but he came to prominence on a show called The Young Ones. Um, which was a kind of big cult uh, 
show that was on the BBC in the early 80s. They did two series. And Alexis Sale played the Belofsky family, uh, where he was a kind of deranged kind of landlord. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very funny. I love um, the young ones of Rick Mayle, Ben Elton comedies, uh, superb. Um, yeah, this one has the warning. This record contains explicit language, abusive, lewd and funny expletives, not deleted. I wouldn't expect anything less from Alexis Sale, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so uh, there you go. It's kind of madcap, uh, sort of bonkers stuff going on there. Um, yeah, he had this single called um, Hello John Got A New Mo Ah, um, which was a kind of minor hit for him. Uh, and yeah, this is the accompanying album. I've never heard this and um, I actually got this as a freebie. So uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be a, a humorous, uh, a humorous listen. So, okay. Um, next one is a band I've, I knew about, but uh, never picked this up. And uh, they kind of, uh, sort of passed me by really in the sort of late 80s. Um, this is the Indigo Girls. Um, this is their self-titled album from 1989. Um, yeah, this is um, they're a folk duo from um, Georgia in the US. Um, and uh, they, I believe they had an association with REM um, uh, and certainly the, on the production side, because it's produced by Scott Litt, uh, who uh, produced um, certainly the, la the latter 80s um, uh, REM albums, I think Document and Green. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, I've seen this album a few times, but never picked it up and it was at a reasonable price. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd, I'd give that a go. Uh, another one um, I've, uh, another artist I've always quite liked, um, but uh, I've never picked this album up. I usually see it in terrible condition, but this is in, um, this one's pretty nice. Uh, this is Cindy Lauper's album, uh, She's So Unusual from 1983. Uh, yeah, this has girls just want to have fun on, um, but I love the song Time After Time. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, Fabulous hit, always like that one. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I think she's a, she's a great artist. Um, so sort of just uh, got a lot of spirit about her and uh, fabulous, yeah. And uh, this was quite pretty cheap, so I'm happy to, to pick that up. Okay, uh, another one from the 80s. Um, this is, uh, I used to actually have this on CD back in the day. Um, but uh, yeah, glad to pick up a vinyl copy. Um, this is the Human League and Unlimited uh, Unlimited Orchestra, um, which is basically uh, sort of instrumental versions of um, and remixes. I think from the their uh, big album their album Dare uh, from nineteen eighty one. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Glad to uh, glad to pick this up. I always liked Dare, and uh, nice to have the. Uh, I always thought these were kind of uh, interesting um, sort of remixes and instrumental versions of those uh, of those tracks. So nice to have that. Okay, uh, this is another one to um, um, fill a gap in my Stevie Wonder collection. Um, I, I did have an awful uh, copy of this, but this is an upgrade. Uh, this is Stevie Wonder's 74 album, Fulfilling This First Finale. Um, yeah, I mean, those series of albums that he did kind of uh, Talking Book, Inner Visions, and this one, just superb. Um, yeah, this has the the uh, hit, um, oh, what's it called again? Uh, Boogie on Reggae Woman. Uh, so yeah. Uh, pleased to pick that up. Um, that's a really nice copy. Okay, um, always uh, pick this lady's uh, stuff up whenever I see it, um, and uh, don't always see a '60s uh, output. But uh, uh, very happy to pick this one up. Um, this is um, her uh, Francois Hardy. This is her debut album 
from 1964. Uh, this is a, a mono copy uh, on Pi. This is, yep, a little bit of writing up there, but uh, other than that, uh, the uh, album's in pretty good condition, I think. Um, that's that Pi label. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I think this has a the first single on Tula Gerson, uh, Tula Gerson uh, It's typical for Francoise Hardy, uh, all her uh, songs were uh, recorded in French. Uh, she was a, a real stickler for recording in, in the French language. Um, fair enough, being as though she's French. Um, there is a uh, uh, quite a common album that's uh, Francois Hardy in English that you see quite a lot. Um, but um, yeah, I do I do pick up her albums from time to time, and uh, um, yeah, so happy to add that one to the collection. Okay, uh, next one is another one on my once list, which I uh, cut off. I saw a reissue of this, but I sort of held out for an original. Uh, this is um, Otis Redding, Carla Thomas, King and Queen. Uh, from this original Stax label. That's a nice copy. Um, yeah, I love this. Uh, the singles off this, Knock on Wood, uh, It Takes Two. Uh, fabulous stuff. Very pleased to pick up a copy of that. Uh, next one I was delighted to get. Um, I'm... Uh, a big Bill Withers fan, but uh, rarely have ever see his uh, his stuff. Um, and this is uh, a copy, an original copy of his nineteen seventy two album, Still Bill. And this is the uh, original with a kind of die cut kind of cover that opens up. And you see Bill there on the inside. Um, yeah, this uh, this is great. It's got "Use Me" um, and uh, which I think was on the uh, Jackie Brown soundtrack, I think, uh, Tanzino, uh, and "Lean on Me." Of course, the other big big hit. Um, I think this was reissued fairly recently, um, uh, sort of after his death. Um, but uh, yeah, delighted to, to pick up an original of that. Uh, okay. Um, next one is a reissue. Um, I really, really like this band, still in the kind of soul psych kind of vein. Um, I have their second album called Aladdin, and this is their uh, reissue of their um, fifth and final album, uh, which uh, where they were re. Uh, renamed as the new Rotary Connection and um, this is their album Hey Love from uh, 1971 I think um, yeah it's still got uh, Minnie Ripperton in the band and this is a lovely reissue on that fantastic cadet concept label uh, it's wonderful. Uh, always nice to see. Um, yeah, wonderful. Really, really enjoy Rotary Connection. Uh, it's great, kind of funky, sort of psych soul. Okay. Um, yeah, another uh, sort of classic here. Um, I've had their stuff on CD for years, never. Uh, got anything on vinyl. Um, this is the debut album from the band Music from Big Pink. Uh, this is a, re a reissue um, from, I don't know, late 70s, early 80s perhaps. Um, not price records. Isn't it great the way they used to stick stickers on, uh, on the album sleeves? God knows why they used to do that, but there you go. Um, that's one for steaming off at some stage. But yeah, I mean, just superb. Um, the weight, of course, uh, Long Black Veil, um, I Shall Be Released, um, Wheels on Fire, fantastic album. 
uh, delighted to get this. This is on this green light. Um, capital. So really, really happy to get that. And uh, add that to the collection. Okay, uh, so just uh, one more now. Um, yeah, I, I, this album I had um, uh, back in the day, I bought it when it came out. Um, actually bought this, bought it on CD. Uh, never have had it on vinyl. Um, this is uh, Kate Bush's classic uh, 1985 album, Hands of Love. And the reason I've bought this, um, because uh, I've already got the, uh, the singles, uh, of which side one of this is pretty much all singles, I think apart from Mother Stands for Comfort, on her um, uh, whole story compilation. Um, but for me, uh, the crowning glory on this album is the second side, which is the ninth wave, um, which is just a song suite um, of uh, seven songs. And it's just superb. Um, yeah, absolutely worth the price of admission um, uh, for that. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful song suite. Um, one of the best sort of musical statements I think she ever made. Um, just super, very emotive, um, you know, wonderful, wonderful, full of that sort of wonderful uh, sort of literary imagery that she, uh, Kate Bush, uh, excels at. Um, and uh, yeah, beautiful, wonderful stuff. So yeah, that's it guys. Um, as I say, that's, uh, that's all my pickups from today. Um, I'll probably upload another video in the next couple of days of the stuff that I found from last week. Um, but as I say, it's all kind of topsy-turvy because uh, I haven't been able to upload anything. So, uh, but um, yeah, I'll, um, as I say, I'll be showing that in the next uh, probably day or two. So Cheers, guys. Have a great um, remainder of your weekend, and I'll see you all again soon. All the best. Bye-bye.